Our next speaker, Bob Van Wiegen, is founder and current vice president of the Calgary Heritage Initiative, a volunteer-based heritage advocacy group. And God knows we need it in Calgary. He is an urban planner by profession and works for the Federation of Calgary Communities. In fact, he's probably attended more council meetings than some of the currently new elected aldermen. Please welcome Bob Van Wiegen. Uh, first of all, I just uh, want to thank you for having me here and thank you for having beer available. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Just reflecting on the previous, uh, the previous talk, I was struck by the fact that the number of mentally ill people in Calgary is equal to the population of Saskatoon, and that just can't be coincidence. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> anyway, if you're interested in Heritage, come and see us at calgaryheritage.org. As noted in the introduction, I'm a heritage guy. One is the first number, and so I thought I would talk about some of Calgary's firsts. Some of our first evidence of human habitation is a buffalo kill site discovered in 1968 when they excavated the basement of Mona Lisa Art Supplies just off of 17th Avenue Southwest. Archaeologists have documented four buffalo kills between 8,000 and 5,000 years ago. Calgary seems so new, it's hard to think in terms of the millennia. But the next time you order a bison burger down on 17th Avenue, give it some thought. Calgary is at least the fourth known name of this place. The region was known to the Sutina as Kutasaw, meeting of the rivers. The Northwest Mounted Police who came here in 1875 called it Bow River Fort, and then for a short time, Fort Brisbois, self-named by the troops' unpopular commander, and finally Fort Calgary. Some of the Mounties who first crossed the river to the fort reenacted this moment 50 years later in Calgary's Jubilee Parade. That's my great-great-uncle John Heron in the middle holding the oar, my first connection to Calgary's first year. Calgary actually has a surviving building that John Heron would have known, the Hunt Cabin, it's behind the Dean House at Fort Calgary, which is part of the original Hudson's Bay Company post, built short months after the fort was established. It's the last building of our first year that still remains. And I guess if one can be the first, one can also be the last. We don't often think of it that way, but the most persistent reminder of early Calgary is the first national railway. Iron rails on the edge of a tiny prairie settlement, now the southern boundary of our incredible downtown. Next time you're sitting at a crossing waiting for the train to pass, let the scenery drop away and recall the experience that has been shared by every generation of Calgarians since 1883. It was the railway and the opening of the West that made Calgary's first boom. Our first town hall, that's it in the front, was torn down and sold for firewood over the objections of the Calgary Herald and others who thought it should have been preserved for posterity. Perhaps our first record of a heritage fight lost. The boom and bust economy began with agriculture and continued with oil. Dingman No. 1 near Turner Valley bought the industry to Alberta. And then Leduc No. 1, see how clever I am with dropping ones into this talk? <laughs> Put us on the energy map. But it was the ready availability of office space in the new Barron building that sealed the deal of Calgary rather than Edmonton being the big head office town. It was the first major post-Leduc office building built on spec by theater owner J.B. Barron. You see, back then, the arts industry supported the oil industry instead of the other way around. <laughs> the oil-fueled boom and bust economy has cleared away many of Calgary's first landmarks, but others remain. We can still visit the original library, just as Calgarians have been doing for almost 100 years was also the home of Calgary's first university, as we heard earlier. It stands in Calgary's first park, which was secured in 1885 on the bald prairie outside of town. To help cure this prairie baldness, it was used as our first tree nursery, and in some ways is the birthplace of our urban forest. As Calgary grew up, the park was artfully designed and nurtured, and now has been lovingly restored. Perhaps this lonely elm tree came from the Central Park Tree Nursery. Recently declared a heritage tree, it has seen the growth and then decline of one of Calgary's first neighborhoods, Victoria Park. 
It experienced the Olympics, stampede expansion, and for the moment, life is a shade tree in a parking lot. The tree does have some surviving contemporaries. The Enoch sales house, which really needs a paint job, an old grocery store, an old bakery, buildings that once served a thriving neighborhood await new uses and new life as part of the Stampede area. The Westbourne Baptist Church was the first pulpit of Alberta political giant and religious figure William Bible Bill Aberhart, and now sits somewhat ironically next to the casino and may have to be moved to make way for Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville. <laughs> but the Stampede, make no mistake, is a Calgary original, and I believe the imaginative, adaptive reuse of authentic Western heritage can only deepen the appeal of its popular expression. One of the big four who financed the first Stampede was A.E. Cross. Long before the oil industry, beer was our marketable liquid. In 1892, he founded Calgary Brewing and Malting Company, the first brewery in Alberta. It helped create the barley industry and the market for natural gas and employed generations of Calgarians. The community-minded crosses made it a public place with gardens and aquarium, a horseman's hall of fame. In many ways, the Calgary beer brand was the brand of Calgary. The original buildings are still there, some of the oldest in Alberta. As time changed, new buildings were added on to old ones, which continue to be adapted and used. The recent threat of demolition now abated stirred a strong response, and I'm hopeful that the tradition of community and adaptation and reuse of buildings on the brewery site will characterize its future development. There are other examples of this, such as in East Village, another original neighborhood awaiting its rebirth. We all sang the blues when the King Eddie Hotel was closed due to mold, but who could imagine that it would be the inspiration and heart of a project such as the Cantos National Music Center just a few years later? What more is there to say about one? Calgary is a young city, and we are fortunate to be pretty close to our firsts, the places that remind us of our collective past, even if we just got here. Calgary is a place of newcomers to be sure, but what we have in common now is this place. Our old places, our first places, deserve our reflection, our respect, and sometimes they need our protection, our imagination, our resources. They deserve and posterity deserves our efforts to help them live on productively to enrich our lives, our city, and our shared experience of the one and only Calgary. Thank you very much.